is up. Oh my goodness. Today is the start of the craziest adventure probably I've ever done. I'm in Iceland right now by myself. I am on the beginning of a 13 day vacation, starting on my own and then ending with my best friend, Ariana. So I've been wanting to do a solo trip for so long. I just never felt like I had the confidence. And then, you know what, I, I said, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna do it. But I wanted to do it at least in an English speaking country or a mostly English speaking country one that was really safe, crazy nature and stuff, and honestly, all those check marked boxes like fit Iceland. Especially because from Kansas City to Reykjavik is a direct flight. I actually got three to four hours of sleep, which is more than I've ever gotten on an overnight flight before. So I'm here for three days. It is currently 11.20 in the morning. I'm in a town called Grindavik. I'm wanting to get some early lunch before I go back about 15-ish minutes to the Famous Blue Lagoon, my time slot is at one, so I've got about an hour and a half to kill. I'm gonna go eat some lobster soup. I'm in Iceland. Like there are all these boats behind me and we're like right on the harbor and it's kind of beautiful and it's just kind of like the perfect start to my trip kind of relaxing highly recommend stopping here if you're ever in iceland and you need a good chill place to go before you go to reykjavik or before you go to blue lagoon stop at grindavik it's a cute little town it's very quiet i thought it'd be popping i thought it would take a while to get in but nope i just popped right in i was like the only one upstairs eating it's just so pretty here and this weather is incredible let's go to the blue lagoon from Grindavik, I drove the quick 15 minute drive and stopped at the big mountain along the way that looked a little cooler in real life before continuing on. Now, despite what most people think, the Blue Lagoon is actually entirely man-made. And it was actually an accidental result of a geothermal power plant that was built nearby in the 70s. Now, people heard about the pool, came to it, and it eventually became the attraction that it is today. I'm at the Blue Lagoon, as you can see, I'm literally just chilling behind 800 year old lava. This is freaking crazy. It is a man-made hot spring. I'm just living. It is the most gorgeous day. And this is like the best way to start a vacation. It's just perfect weather, a really chill day to do things at my own pace. Go to Iceland, it's great. So much fun. I'm gonna try and go make some friends. Okay, bye. Okay, I gotta get out of this. Oh my God. Ooh. You guys, it's actually really peaceful over here. There's like no one over here. And I just got like weird, like gloomy music, but I'm kind of into it. I almost burned, so I went inside for a little bit. And now I'm back, I'm running again, because I don't have my sunscreen. Now that we're done with the Blue Lagoon, off to Reykjavik. eat just grab something and didn't really know what the next rest of my evening was going to be then i ended up at the halgrim skircha halgrim skircha is the national church in iceland and it's the tallest building in all of reykjavik and so it has a big tower look at that there's a freaking mountain in the background i'm obsessed with the city i love it it is so cute everyone is so friendly the place that i went to go eat at they gave everyone a free chocolate bar afterwards it's in the back of my pocket hopefully it's not gonna melt it's so cute Algrim Skircha is probably the easiest attraction to locate in Reykjavik simply because it is visible from most places in the city. Now I visited at the end of the day and was treated to a gorgeous 360 degree view of Reykjavik at sunset, which included Mount Esja across the harbor. I then headed down to the Sun Voyager statue for a long walk across the harbor before going back to my hostel. This morning I slept in late because I didn't sleep well last night because people here party till four in the morning. So all I've really done today was I went and got a hot dog because that's what they're famous for around here. Icelandic hot dogs usually include onions, ketchup, sweet mustard, and something called runyalot. It was definitely different, but I actually really enjoyed it. And it was definitely the cheapest meal I had during my entire trip. 
And then, as you can tell in the background, I went to church. Here's the deal. It was in Icelandic. I went to church and didn't know a single word, aside from hallelujah, amen, and I said the Our Father. So, it's actually kind of funny, and I feel like I get a bunch of Catholic points for this. Because I was told online, on the website, that the 1 p.m. mass was in English. Ensku equals English. I'm gonna go check it again, but I swear it was supposed to be in English, and then it was not. Could have been Polish? Who knows? But I think it was Icelandic. Anyway, I didn't know what was going on. But I had a good time. With my whale watching tour not until 8 p.m., I decided to spend the rest of the afternoon exploring the city. I was amazed by how colorful it was. From the parks, the modern buildings, to all the graffiti and murals, there was honestly something new at every turn. And I was truly amazed at the vibrancy of the city. I am going on a rib whale watching tour, which is different than the big boats behind me. Those are like the big ones that hold like 30, 40 people and you don't really get as close. I spent a little more money and booked the like the 12 person. They're called rib boats, which are smaller. They go a lot faster. The tour doesn't last as long, but you can get much closer to the whales and they can get to them quicker because they're smaller and faster. And we get to go see puffins too. We'll go in size order. The smallest, cutest harbor porpoises, the white beaked dolphins, the minky whales, and we did put a tracker on a humpback whale yesterday. We did get to see a lot of dolphins and some puffins. It was amazing. I'm. It was the most gorgeous sunset I've ever seen. We saw a freaking rainbow. Unfortunately, we didn't see any whales. Elding, the company that we went with, their tour has a 90% success rate in Reykjavik and then a 99% success rate of, up north. And apparently we were just, unfortunately, that 10% that didn't see any today. They do offer a voucher to take another tour in the next two years. I mean, this is basically gonna be an excuse for me to come back in less than two years, which I'm not opposed to. I gotta get up early because I'm gonna go do driving and driving and more driving to go all over the south of Iceland. <laughs> Thank you.
I drove almost two hours to get to. I left the hostel at 6 a.m., drove an hour and 45 to 50 minutes to get here to Selgelandsvoss, which is, as you can see, a very large waterfall. You can literally walk behind. There's a waterfall over there that I can't pronounce that less people know about. This is our first stop of the day. It is 8 a.m. That's why there are very few people here. Also, it's a little rainy, but you know, I'm just gonna accept that my hair is gonna be real frizzy today. Let's go! I'm inside a giant crater. This is the crater carrot. Again, don't know if I'm butchering that, but the only thing that I can tell you guys is that this crater is 6,500 years old. It's free to park, but it costs about $4 to get in. Only I didn't have to because I was gonna pay with cash and they were out of cash to pay me back. So they just let me in free. So that's a trick to maybe try, who knows? Just sitting in the bottom of the crater. I'll probably go back up in a minute. So I am here at the Faxi Waterfall. It's a lesser known one, clearly by the lack of people here. There's like two other like roofs here. What's crazy is that like you can just literally go right up to the falls and you could like easily get swept in. Like, look. Look how close we are. Oh look, there's the falls. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. oh. The unfortunate thing is that it did cost, oh there's something on my face. I've been tackled by bugs today. There is a like a seven ish, six or seven ish dollar fee to park. After this, I'm gonna go to lunch and then maybe before we're gonna go see some geysers. And we'll just keep on going on this very, very busy Golden Circle tour. The next and quickest stop of the day was definitely geyser. The term geyser is actually an Icelandic term, and geyser is actually the first known documented geyser in the world. The Great Geyser used to erupt a couple times a day and could reach over 500 feet throughout the last couple of centuries, but today it is almost considered inactive by how rarely it erupts. However, less than 100 feet away from the Great Geyser is Stroker, and while it doesn't erupt nearly as high as the Great Geyser, it does erupt every 5 to 10 minutes. While it's definitely a must stop, I wouldn't recommend staying there more than 20 to 30 minutes. at lunch, it's like 2.30, it took me a really long time. 
but I had to book a reservation for this place because you can see me. I'm currently in a greenhouse. It's called Freedom Friedheimer. Again, I'll put all the, the descriptions down below. It is a tomato greenhouse. Apparently they pick one ton of tomatoes every single day from here. So obviously their big thing is tomato soup, which I had, which is delicious. Apparently in order to you know, pollinate the flowers and all the plants in here, they have to import bees from Norway. Having my lunch alone, eat tomato soup and bread, and it's freaking amazing. I was so hungry. Something else I forgot to mention is that one of the reasons that these tomatoes are so good is that they're entirely watered by the glacier water, which is what everything in all the water here, the tap water, the shower water, everything is water from the glaciers. And so that's what makes these tomatoes so good. And obviously the tomatoes are like 80% water. waterfalls. I'm at a waterfall called Golfus, which is arguably the most or one of the most famous in all of Iceland because one, it's so big and two, it's really accessible because it's on Golden Circle. It's one of the three main stops that everyone goes to. But like I thought, oh, it's big, but I'm sure it's not that big. Like I've seen all the photos and it just didn't seem enormous to me. I mean, I've been to Niagara Falls and I just didn't think this was like going to be anything special. But oh my gosh, was I wrong. This thing is massive. It's not necessarily the widest in, compared to like Niagara Falls in terms of like height and like levels and things it does. Holy crap. I'm in awe. Look at this. It's intense. And the coolest part about it is that you're, you're coming in from above to look down and you can't even see where the water ends because it kind of, it goes into the rest of the river, but the, it's so tight and skinny down there that and with all the mist, like you can't see where it goes. It just looks like it descends to nowhere. How down, deep down is it? We don't know. We'll never know. On to the last couple stops. Last vlog of the day slash of my entire Icelandic adventure. Right now I'm in Thingvellir National Park. It's the last stop on the Golden Circle route. I just finished at, where'd it go? There's a waterfall over there. Um, Oxafoss, don't actually know if it's the right name. I don't know and I'm not really sure I can right now. I really have to go to the bathroom. Anyway, saw a fountain or waterfall. I've seen a bunch of them today, so it's kind of like that was kind of meh. The cool thing that I wanted to vlog about right now is that right now I am in between two tectonic plates because here in Iceland is where the two continental plates that are way underneath it, they smash together and formed these walls, which I just think is really freaking cool. Anyway, I have to go to the bathroom. I'm gonna go and go pee. Thank you guys so much for watching. On to the next adventure in Dublin. Peace out. I'm too awkward for this. I can't leave without saying thank you guys so much for watching this interesting vlog. Please make sure to subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys next time. I can't end without a happy exploring.